Good morning. Welcome to Ma to St. Mary's. Please join us in singing our gathering song, The God of All Grace, in your blue book, page number 308, in your blue book, 308. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sinned to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Enable us, we pray, Almighty God, in, to proclaim the power of the risen Lord, that we who have received the pledge of his gift may come to possess all he gives when it is fully revealed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one had claimed any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was according them all. There was no needy person among them, 
for those who own property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of sales, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. Thus Joseph, also named by the apostles Barnabas, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite, a Cyprinite, by both, sold a piece of property he owned. Then he brought it, brought the money and put it at the feet of the apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is king in splendor robed. Robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. And he has made the world, the world firm, not to be moved. The throne stands firm from of old. From everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Your your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Holiness, holiness befits your house, O Lord, for the length of days. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can this happen? Jesus answered and said to him, You are the teacher of Israel, and you do not understand this? Amen, amen, I say to you, We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But you people do not accept our testimony. If I tell you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things. No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all this morning. <clears throat> Today in our first reading, we hear from the Acts of the Apostles. And the Acts of the Apostles is a book in the Bible. It's right after the Gospel of John. And the Acts of the Apostles really is a book about what? Does anyone know? Does anyone have any idea what, what the Acts of the Apostles kind of is about in a general way, Cooper? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's actually, as the name implies, what the apostles did after Jesus died and rose from the dead. Really, we could say it's the early church. So we're hearing about the first Christians. When we're listening to the Acts of the Apostles, and for, at the very beginning we hear, really in chapter 2 of Acts of the Apostles, we hear about Pentecost, the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles. And, and, and then further on, we just continue to hear about the, the early church, the first Christians, and, and how they lived. The ones that literally witnessed Jesus risen from the dead, those who ate and drank after he rose from the dead. Can you only imagine what that must have been like? Like, not only to just talk with Jesus after he rose from the dead, but to literally eat and drink and have a meal with him? That's a phenomenal thing to think about. And, and that's what motivated them to, do, to, to, to live the way they lived. What was it in our first reading today? Did you notice that? What was it that they did? What, it was common among them that they did. Maya? Well, they shared the gospel, the good news. They, they proclaimed Jesus risen from the dead. That's true. But how did they live as Christians? Did you pick up on that? How did they live? I know it's early. It's hard to pick up on some of that. So if you, you, you may have missed it, but they lived in, with sharing, and, and they were living out love and generosity. It says that they all had property in common. In other words, they, they didn't really worry about, well, this is mine and this is yours, and, and, and I have this over here and you have that over there. They shared everything. They shared everything. And when someone needed something, they, they sold a piece of property. And what did they do? They put the money at the feet of the apostles. And then they just gave the money wherever there was a need. And so in, in the first, with the first Christians in the early church, those who knew Jesus, risen from the dead, those who were beginning to follow the way of Jesus, they shared everything. They, they, there, there was no that's yours and this is mine, They're, they really lived out generosity. And in fact, one of them, we heard of him today, we hear about him today, his name was Barnabas, which means son of, or, uh, yeah, son of encouragement. So what a, what a phenomenal thing it must have been. They always were looking out for each other. They were always looking to see, hey, what do you need? How can I help you? What do you need? How, how can I help you? Isn't that phenomenal? Now, take that to us today. How can we live that way? How can we be generous? How can we be uh, uh, loving? How can we be looking out for others' needs? What do you need? How can I help you? The generosity that they had was amazing. See, we live in a culture now. We live in a world now that, that tells us that we should be very much uh, trying to always just keep our things and that we should be very self-centered, and that we should not really share a whole lot. That, that's what the world tells us, that we need to hold on to what we have and don't give it to anybody, or only give it if you've got plenty to, to give away. Don't, don't give too much away. That's not the way of Jesus, though. Jesus continues to tell us to be generous and to share. So who can we, or who, rather, do we need to be generous with? Who do we need to be more generous with in our lives? Whether that's at home, that's probably the first place Jesus is asking us to be generous, right? First at home, then here at school, and it just keeps going out. Because if you and I are generous like Jesus, if we're generous with our things, with, if we're generous with our stuff, if we're generous with love, now we're beginning to look like the first Christians. Now we're beginning to look like the first followers of Jesus. So how can you and I, that's, that's, that's our takeaway today, boys and girls, where do I need to be more generous? Or who do we need to be more generous to? And now let us stand as we offer to our Heavenly Father these, our prayers, and our petitions. Our Holy 
Father, and all bishops and priests, may Jesus continue to confirm them evermore to his heart as they minister to, to the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations, may the witness of commutative Christians foster and increase respect for human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer with mental or faithful illness, may the Holy Spirit outpour his healing and consult upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us gathered here, may the grace and mentors of partaking and the Eucharist draw us deeper and I'm with our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may the feast with the angels and saints and the presence of God and Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, Heavenly Father, as we listen to the first Christians, the followers of Jesus, help us, we pray, to be like them in being generous with those around us. We ask this in all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the preparation of the gifts, the servant song in your blue book, number 395, in your blue book, number 395. <laughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Pray, 
Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Carl, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
for our communion song in Christ alone in your blue book number 415 in your blue book number 415. Cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest. 
Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. For a sending forth song, Alleluia, Alleluia, in your blue book number 175, in your blue book number 175. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.